Hey guys, I'm Ryan and welcome to Mad Acre Homestead. Today is November the 16th. I'm going to be uh, actually making another trip to the local rabbit show here. I don't have my wife, uh, Mrs. Madison, with me today. I did bring another companion, uh, Desperado, one of my Dutch duck bucks. Um, right now I got him back in a tote. We actually heading to the local um, feed store to get um, a cage for him so I can be able to properly transport him. Um, so yesterday was very eye-opening eye and as well as interesting for me. I learned a lot. One of the biggest thing I learned so far as being a new uh, Dutch rabbit um, husbandry or raising Dutch rabbits, however you want to say it, um, was I have two different stocks. I have black Dutch, which are my bucks, and I have gray Dutch, which are my does. So what I learned is that I can't um, crossbreed them of the color. You can, but if you're looking to show, you're not gonna get the quality of the rabbit you need in order to show your rabbits. So on our way back home, I uh, had a candid conversation with uh, Mrs. Madison, my wife, about potentially, potentially culling two of the rabbits um, and that would be Billy Jean, um, who's a pet quality rabbit, and as well as, as Caesar, who's another pet quality rabbit. And I was just using them to breed, was going to use them to breed pet quality rabbits, but also <clears throat> to make sure I have two rabbits who are bred at the same time. That way, if something happens to one of the mothers, the other mother can nurse the rabbit. Um, so that led to, led to a... Uh, a serious conversation with my wife who unfortunately is in disagreement with me on the things I want to do with the rabbits. She's considering the, as a, I guess a social norm or society has portrayed rabbits as just strictly pets where I'm looking at rabbits as a way of life um, between um, the manure, the, um, the meat harvesting, as well as potentially getting to pelts and as well as selling pet rabbits but um and she didn't see it that way um so we was at subway eating um steak and cheese sandwiches and and she was um, she was expressing her dismay in what i was trying to do uh when it comes to harvesting the rabbits for meat so this conversation went on for about maybe 20, 25 minutes and I, as we eat our steak and cheese sandwiches, I said to her, um, I pretty much asked her, what did she think about the cow that was sacrificed to provide us the meat to have that steak and cheese sandwich today? Um, and I explained to her, we don't know what kind of conditions that cow lived in. We don't know what the farmer or the corporation who raised that cow put in that cow or fed that cow but we're blindly accepting that as a as a society that is okay to eat that that food and that, that's her thought process out of sight out of mind i don't know what happened so therefore in my mind even though i know i'm eating beef i'm not really eating beef um and in some cases you're not really eating, not only eating beef, you're eating the contents in the, the, um, the contents in, in the medicine or, or the antibiotics and whatever they put inside that cow or that pig or that chicken or whatever the animal may be to get it to the point of having it on your table. And having, I know, having high blood pressure, I've been, uh, very trying to be very conscious of what have I what I eat and one thing I have noticed even though I exercise a lot I've lost a lot of weight um, I'm eating healthy I'm not eating a lot of junk food I eat a lot of vegetables uh, I still eat meat uh, that I get from the store because I don't have the ability to produce my own meat at this time due to my land restrictions uh, but my blood pressure hasn't changed, which, which has required me to get on medicine, and I don't like taking medicine. Um, in fact, I forgot to take my blood pressure medicine today. But 
with that being said, I asked her that question and her response was, I prefer not to know. And I'm like, we can't, as a society, we cannot continue to go on not knowing because that's not acceptable. To me, not knowing is not acceptable um, not, and, and it's not okay. So not knowing what's in your food, who produced that food, where that food came from, what the type of conditions that animal live, and we, as a capital, capitalism nation, we continue to give our money to these corporations and they continue to produce, mass produce these animals in, in, in horrible, in my opinion, horrible conditions. So we, as a society, we have to change that and we have to do better as society and, and how that takes, how that happens is starting at the home, producing your own food buying food locally that you you can go down the street or 15 minutes or a half hour or hour whatever it may be from your home and know what that farmer is doing to their livestock or what they're doing to produce that food to put on your table that's very important these days um so that's the conversation i had with miss madison uh it started last night it continued on this morning uh I think she's leaning that way of understanding what I'm trying to do and I'm gonna loosen the reins on me a little bit to let me do it because we have a, a very limited amount of space. So I have enough space right now where I can have maybe six or seven rabbits where I feel comfortable. I probably can have more than that, but that's what I feel comfortable with my space and having the rabbits. That way they can have a sustainable and a happy life. I don't want my rabbits confined on top of each other, um, you know, in fecal matter or urine um, and whatnot. So I want to make sure that they're happy and, and making sure they're happy in, in the long run when it comes time to this one horrible day that they're gonna have in their life. I know that I did the best I could as a uh, a livestock producer to provide them with a good life. I know what I put inside their bodies and when I put it on my, my table to feed myself and my family, there's not going to be any negative reaction from that. So that's where I left off with the conversation. I do want to get you guys' input on it. Um, what's your thoughts? Have you had to go through a conversation like this with a, a loved one or a spouse on uh, raising and calling animals for for the benefit of a food consumption um, so please leave your comments below um, we're almost to the, the feed store here I'm going to uh, track the supply grab another um, cage so we're almost there I'm gonna I'm stop it right here I'll pick it back up once we get to the rabbit show I do apologize about yesterday I my battery went dead on me and I couldn't get as much footage I brought my charger today and I bought a backup uh, portable charger so I can be able to charge on the go if the battery go dead so we can get some more footage today um, I definitely look forward to you guys' comments I'll see you when I get to the rabbit show peace alright guys we made it to the show here um, the Dutch has already been showed I was a little bit late I did bring Desperado with me um, Dwayne looked at him and said he looks like a pretty solid solid buck the only thing downfall about that is that he um, doesn't have any papers or anything like that so I don't know his pedigree so we can show him but um, placement wise it wouldn't be a purpose I bought some new digs for him uh, cage wise uh, even though I bought a cage Sorry, I bought a cage at um tried to supply this morning. I bought it. Okay, so that's gonna place. Maybe this little youngster here, TC3. TC3 has a nice blaze. 
it's just a little bit on the other side. Just have a nice salad of, um, on the bias side. She has good cheeks. And of course, her undercut is very fine. Her stops are a little Where they're at in the line. Just have a nice little body pack. She's got a good shoulder. Good mesh neck from the pine shoulder. Doesn't have a good density check. Perfect. Good cheeks. Again, she's got um, good undercut. Well, nice length of her stop. She just have one little drag in that that left hand stop. She does have a beautiful body. She's got a nice shoulder. Very nice midsection. Just a little bit narrow on her height. All right, guys. We're gonna go tour this place. So what's the difference between the Ritz and the uh, New Zealand? How do you tell the difference? Fur? Have you pet in New Zealand before? No, I haven't. No. I'm new at this. So, um, Rex has like really soft plush fur like velvet. Oh, wow. Yeah. They are like, Rex are also like kind of like a meat breed like New Zealand. Mm -hmm. But they have different fur. Okay. But I was just fur. looking at some New Zealand over there. They got the same eyes, same color. Yeah. So it's, I was like. They have different fur. Wow. That one's actually a mini Rex. That's as big as he'll get. And then that's mom, and those are her babies. So, but yeah, like I think how, New Zealand. How old are uh, how old are they? You can pet her too. Um, New Zealand have fur closer to that, but um, okay. yeah, these you can... guys are like probably four months old, five months old. I don't remember. Probably four. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, so, pretty amazing um, show. I just my first time ever going to a rabbit show. They, I know they have one coming up in December as well. I'm going to probably go to, and I may have the ability to show at this show because I purchased, I purchased this doe here uh, from Christina, um, in and out her herd, and she gave me this buck who's actually already won his first leg. Um, so, so I need two more and he can be considered a grand champion, she said. So I'm pretty excited and stoked about adding these two to my flock or whatever you wanna call it. I do apologize, but I do, I, I'm pretty excited about adding them because I had, um, I have a pedigree buck now and I didn't have a pedigree buck before um, so 
one thing I will suggest if you're looking to purchase uh, rabbits is one making sure you get the pedigree um, and there's three at least three generations two asking for some of the uh, rabbit food that way you can wean them down um, off of that food and onto the food that you eat uh, that you feed your rabbit I should say um, so pretty excited um, Mrs. Madison knows I'm coming home with the dough but she doesn't know about the buck and I'll tell her when I get there and uh, let you know how she reacts. I'm hoping she's gonna react um, pleasant and happy um, because I'm pretty excited myself. Um, so I'm gonna head to drive home. You guys wish me luck. Hey guys, so I made it home. Um, our rabbit tree has grown by two. Um, we picked up a, a pedigree doe and as well as a pedigree buck. Um, I purchased uh, the doe from Christina, uh, the young lady who I said that she had um, 165 rabbits. Uh, she's placed 27 in, um, in the Dutch show. So um, it's an awesome win to be able to get a, a rabbit from her. But also she was nice enough to give me uh, this buck here um, who already has one um, a leg. He has a little boo-boo on his nose that he's um, he's healing through. But um, the goal is we have a show coming up here in December is to take these guys both to show and see how I, I do for the first time. Um, this... Um, this rabbit show was very eye-opening and very interesting and as as well as educational everybody there there was was so eager to help me and explain to me um what to look for in rabbits the rules of the show um when the judges are explaining faults i call them faults or pros and cons about the rabbits what that meant um so i learned a lot of the information that I haven't seen on YouTube or read in a book yet. Um, only downfall about the show today was I didn't get to clean the rabbit tree like I usually do on Saturday. So I'm going to be doing that tomorrow and getting these guys all cleaned up. I just purchased these two cages today. So these are clean. Uh, I'm a little nervous about having them stack three high. Um, anyone that has suggestions on how to mount this or fasten this to the wall, my floors aren't level or scrap it some kind of way to keep it from fall falling because my rabbits do sometimes get a little little um, frisky. I put it like that. They like to run around the cage and, and get everything all shaken up. Billy Jean was actually just doing that not too long ago before I started the camera. Um, but just wanted to come on um major shout out to christina and uh aaron and and uh Dwayne for helping me out and all the other people um at the show um like i said very first time engaging into a rabbit show um uh, new to rabbitry um so this is all new to me i did purchase uh, myself a a little transport or a show cage. I saw everybody with one, so I said I have to get one. Um, so I got this today as well. Um, that was a anniversary gift from my wife. Well, from me, from my wife to myself. So, <laughs> so um, but yeah, um, super excited. I I just wanted to come on tonight, just let you guys know the good news. Um, and I enjoyed the show. We're gonna have some footage of, the show, of course, that this is gonna be attached to. Uh, but um, um, yeah, and I got two new rabbits. Um, so yeah, so I can't be any more elated. So I'm gonna get out of here. Go share the rest of the night with my wife. We gotta go get a couple uh, things for the rabbits. Still uh, a couple water bowls. I didn't have enough water bowls, so gotta go get some water bowls and um, get them all nestled in for tonight. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.